Yep, it's that time of the year again. Time to be grateful for everything you have. I want you to think about it for a moment. Really acknowledge to yourself how fortunate you actually are. Welcome, my name is Seem, and to be honest, I don't actually celebrate Thanksgiving because I'm not from the United States, but it's a cool holiday, so I decided to make a video about how to stay healthy and keto friendly during Thanksgiving. And possibly eat another bite. And when I say keto friendly, then I'm not talking about the ketogenic diet specifically. It simply means that the food will keep you in a metabolically advantageous spot by keeping your energy stable, preventing cravings, and not feeling like crap after you eat. I think you killed us. So tip number one is to prepare a keto friendly menu. You have to come prepared. The traditional Thanksgiving dinner is full of non keto proof foods that aren't that good for your health. This is actually one of the biggest problems with the holidays and it's also a massive blind spot in culture. Everyone wants to be healthy, everyone wants to be fit, everyone wants to eat delicious foods, but no one wants to be the party pooper. So can we come in? If you put in just a little bit of extra effort by cooking your own food, then you can get as delicious meals as you would when using the traditional ingredients. You have to look at the underlying motivations. Why are you doing this? Are you celebrating Thanksgiving to eat some mashed potatoes? Or to let apple pie to put you in a food coma? I need something sweet. Or are you doing it to have a good time with friends and family? So the first tip is to be prepared to introduce some keto friendly foods to your family. You might not be able to replace all the foods, but you still have a lot of options. Here are a few. Mashed potatoes into cauliflower mashed potatoes. You basically take an entire head of cauliflower Cut it into chunks, then you use a food processor to shred it into smaller pieces. You lightly steam the cauliflower mash until it gets slightly soft and tender. Then you're gonna use another blender to blend it into mashed potatoes, with maybe a little bit of heavy cream. Add some seasoning, some black pepper, some salt, maybe some cinnamon even, and you serve it with some sour cream and fresh herbs. Voila! The texture is exactly like mashed potatoes and it tastes even better if you use the right seasoning. One cup of mashed potatoes has 212 calories and 35 carbs versus the one cup of cauliflower mash which has 120 calories mostly from fat and only 8 carbs. So I don't know which one do you want to eat. Another one. Pumpkin pie into keto pumpkin pie. Swap out the regular white flour with coconut flour, walnut flour, almond flour, flaxseed meal or any other healthy alternative. It's so simple and it requires virtually zero effort. But at the same time, you avoid so many empty calories and unnecessary inflammation. As an alternative to sugar, you can use stevia or erythritol. The pumpkin puree is also super easy to make. You scrape out the flesh of the pumpkin, then you steam it until it's soft and add it to the filling. Bonus points if your family goes like, hey, this actually tastes a lot better than the rest of this crap. Then you've opened up the whole new paradigm for them. They realize that delicious food that is healthy, that keeps them fit, it can taste even better than the traditional foods. A massive paradigm shift. Put that cookie down, now! Of course, the Thanksgiving turkey is a very keto-friendly meal. Stop! You grab a whole turkey, you prepare it, add some onions, garlic, some vegetables, put it into a pot or a pan and it's all good. Stick around. Keto noodles can be made with spaghetti squash or zucchini noodles. You can also make some nice snacks by cooking roasted broccoli florets some charred leaves or kale chips. Maybe make some guacamole with the uh, avocados. Super simple, easy and delicious. Kale, yeah. For dessert, you can make sugar-free jello with whipped cream or coconut milk ice cream. So you just have to put in the extra work and show your family that there is indeed a better option. Which brings me to the second point I want to talk about. Tip number two, challenge the traditions. The reality of the situation is this. Everyone follows the norms and rules of the social group because they don't dare to challenge them. They don't have the arrogance 
the audacity to even raise the option of maybe not eating those inflammatory foods and swapping out with some healthy recipes. They don't even raise the possibility because they're afraid of what others might think of them. Most people follow traditions and cultural habits because they think that it's wrong. It's wrong to question the beliefs of your community, like what values to share, what holidays to celebrate, and what to eat. That's why you have to constantly challenge your own behavior, and especially the behavior of others around you, because, as it turns out, no one has an idea of what they're really doing. So, instead of simply falling victim to the conditions that have been imposed upon you by society, you have to break those chains and innovate yourself to a healthier lifestyle. And then they realize that it's not that binary, you know, it's either delicious food and I'm fat, or I have to eat this bland crap that doesn't taste any good and I'm fit. You can not get the deliciousness and you get the fitness. You can get both worlds. So that's how you hack culture. Ugh, giving thanks. Ugh. And tip number three is to not worry about it. You shouldn't become dogmatic about any diet, about keto, about paleo, about veganism, about Thanksgiving. I mean, you're not gonna die if you do have some real mashed potatoes. It's not going to make your brain explode either if you have some cake with gluten. In fact, those situations can actually improve your metabolic flexibility by creating a hormetic response. Small amounts of inflammation and toxic compounds can actually make your physiology more resilient and anti-fragile. Even if you do eat slightly too much keto pumpkin pie and it kicks you out of ketosis, it's not a big deal. You're not gonna lose your keto adaptation. It might even help you to re-establish ketosis faster in the future because your body knows how to swap in between different fuel sources. All right, where's that turkey? So it's a win-win situation if you change your mindset about it. Of course, if you're freaking out and getting anxiety about eating certain foods, then you're definitely gonna trigger a fight or flight response and it's gonna lead to more increased heart rate, elevated blood sugar levels, and it's gonna prevent you from having a good time. Because at the end of the day, that's the biggest reason why you're doing the ketogenic diet. To enjoy yourself while you're eating, and to have a better life when you're not eating. Is that pie? It's possible. It's possible to have a keto-friendly Thanksgiving dinner. You don't have to get inflamed or fat during the holidays. Uh, this cut me a little sliver. If you're interested in starting the ketogenic diet, whether that be after the holidays or before them to lose a few extra pounds, then check out my best-selling simple keto video course on Udemy. You can get an 80% Thanksgiving discount code. I'm grateful for you having watched this video. And I would be even more grateful if you would click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. Thanks for watching. My name is Seem. Stay thankful. Stay empowered.